include a pact that makes Poland, the Baltic States, Finland, and Romania their prey. The Germans and Soviets raise armies to crush their opponents with greater numbers of modern equipment. In both armies, armored units become the main strike force. But it is the massive and unprecedented air power that opens the way for the German Blitzkrieg and the Soviet march westwards. On the 1st of September, the Second World War breaks out. The Germans launch an invasion of Poland. The Luftwaffe deploys almost 2,000 aircraft of various types. The Polish army opposes these forces with less than 500. The enemy's advantage is 5 to 1. While the Polish Air Force inflicts proportionally greater losses on the Germans, it stands no chance of winning. By the end of 1939, Almost all Polish aviation personnel make their way to France. Polish pilots bring the most valuable skill of a pilot, combat experience. Of the two combat squadrons, only the first Warsaw Fighter Squadron takes part in combat. After the surrender of France in June of 1940, most of the Polish pilots evacuate to Great Britain and initially continue fighting as part of the Royal Air Force. In the UK, the Polish government in exile works with the British to organize an air force once again. The squadrons are formed. The 302 Poznan Squadron, which is the first to enter service, and the most famous Warsaw fighter squadron, the 303, which achieves great success in the Battle of Britain. Polish pilots serve not only there, they fly in a dozen or so squadrons of the Polish air force in the west. Bombing squadrons 300 and 301, logistic squadrons and special purpose squadrons. Regardless of their unit and function, they risk their lives, often remaining out of the spotlight. Poland is no more. The Germans have created a general government out of part of the occupied lands and incorporated the rest into the Reich. Terror reigns everywhere. The Germans persecute the Jews, forcing them to resettle in ghettos and then send transports to extermination camps. From the very first days of the war, Poles are arrested and shot. On the 27th of September 1939, while the Polish army is still fighting, an underground military organization is established. The service for Poland's victory, which is transformed into the Union of Armed Struggle and the Home Army the largest underground army in occupied Europe. In order to fight on, they need to be in contact with the Polish government in London. To this end, the 1586th Special Purpose Squadron is created in 1943, carrying couriers and essential supplies. It's an express line to hell. As the planes make their way over German-occupied Europe, flying at the limits of their capabilities, running on fumes. 1943 becomes a watershed year. The Allies land in Italy. On the Eastern Front, the Germans suffer defeat at Kursk. A year later, the Allies land in Normandy. The days of the Third Reich seem numbered. Meanwhile, another threat arrives from the East. Hitler's recent ally, Soviet Russia. Its armies defeat the Third Reich and advance, occupying Polish lands. They establish political control over them and usher in a new terror. In response, the leaders of the Polish state introduce Plan Tempest, a demonstration of Polish presence in the liberated areas. Home army units are to reveal themselves and cooperate with the Soviets. Stalin, however, does not intend to share his power. Operation Tempest does not include big cities. At the last moment, Warsaw is included, where an uprising is being prepared. The Germans can thwart these plans with a single decree, forcing the Varsovians to build fortifications. It is clear to the Home Army that this will decimate the Polish forces in Warsaw. It's necessary to act. It's now or never. The dramatic decision is made on the 1st of August, 
the uprising in Warsaw breaks out. The insurgents manage to capture the city center, the main post office, the postal station, the power station, the arsenal. However, the Germans defend themselves fanatically. They send new troops to Warsaw. The insurgents keep on fighting. They look to the sky, but the only planes over their heads are Stukas carrying death. Meanwhile, Polish pilots stationed in Italy learn from the radio about the outbreak of the uprising. Their commander has only eight operational airplanes. It's not until the 4th of August that the pilots receive permission to airdrop aid for the home army, but in completely different parts of Poland. The pilots decide to break through to Warsaw on their own. Will they make it in time before the SS troops, which are ready to crush the uprising? On the 15th of August, our crew is ready. The objective? Warsaw in the Campinos Forest. The route and takeoff time are decided for us. We have to be over the target between midnight and 2 a.m. to avoid interception by German fighters over Hungary. The sun rises at 4.20 a.m. May we live to see that sunrise.